Acts 14, 21 to 22. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch confirming the souls of the disciples like I'm doing today confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we may no, we must <laughs> through small tribulation we must through much wahala enter into the kingdom I'm teaching you on the gospel you never taught the message of pain <laughs> some of you are shocked seeing this scripture for the first time in the Bible we must must means an inescapable situation we must the Bible tells us that we must through much tribulation ah, into the kingdom of God if you can capture what I'm about to preach for the few moments I have here I can assure that the next hundred years I will still see you standing in God I will be rest assured gives us strongest knowledge the bible says in Hosea 4 says my people perish because they lack what knowledge that's where we are standing i have read the stories of men through ministry before i came in so every basis of life was an expectation not a coincidence i said ah, it just happened oh, I, wait. I expected it to come because i knew the protocol the modus operandi the way god works I've studied it from the life. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 6 and verse 12 that we should follow. We should not be slothful in business. We should follow those who through faith and patience obtained the promise. We should check them. From the because success and failure leaves clues. Success and failure leave clues. It's just for you to be diligent enough to study those clues. Here we are seeing a scripture telling us that it is of necessity that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom so it simply means there will be times of our life in this kingdom painful moments where God wouldn't make sense anymore a certain things will happen to us we can no longer understand it's part of the process it is inside the gospel they gave you they didn't just show you that part they told you when you come everything will be fine everything will be just good but I'm showing you the other part give me Proverbs, Psalm 34 verse 19 Psalm 34 verse 9 says, Many are the afflictions of the unrighteous. No, many are the afflictions of what? The righteous. So righteous men, no, it's not an issue of sin here and iniquity. No, that's why it's painful to see how that we judge people when we see them in unpleasant situations and feel because they've committed this sin. The Bible tells us that the righteous man will find himself in situations of afflictions. But one thing that is, he should be rest assured of is that God will deliver him from every one of them. I've been there. I've been in situations where people have concluded. I said, ah, it can't work again. Let's see how it goes. We've had meetings like this in the office for years. Right? So how do you want to conclude that you bounce back like this again? We've been on that pathway. We understand that Lamentations 3 and verse 1. He said, I am a man that have seen affliction. I am a man that have seen pain in life. I'm a man that have seen affliction by the rod, by his rod, the rod of his rod, not by the devil doing it, by God pushing me through those painful moments of life. Do we understand that? Things to know about the message of pain so pain I know I told us in an inescapable phase of life it is the womb that carries progress it's the womb that carries progress you can escape it's part of the systems of God and that's what I came to teach you to understand it so when you find your situation of life you know a season of promotion is by the corner do we understand that because when you don't know it the Bible says it is good to know that all things work together for the good of them that love him there is that you have to have the knowledge of it so it doesn't matter what I see disappointment I just know that it is working out for my good God's ways might be confusing but his intentions are always pure do we understand that he might be slow but he's sure 
Do we capture that? The message of pain. Things to note. Number one, if God allows affliction, he knows you can handle it. First Corinthians 10 and when God brings you into painful situation, he said there is no temptation that comes to man that is not common to men. But God will not bring any temptation to you, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that you are not able to undo. But with that same temptation, he will make a way of what? Escape. Please pay attention. This is the liberation for someone. Don't miss this moment. That's why I came. Are we, are we getting blessed? Number two, even what you call the promise is full of high moments and low moments. This is not a straight line graph. The promised land is full of what? High moments and low moments. The promised land. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 11. Give me that scripture. Deuteronomy 11, 11. But the land whither you go to possess it, it is a land of and valleys high moments of life and low moments of life that land that we call the promised land are we getting blessed praying the holy ghost one minute number three uh -huh. if you can give me this in the message version i'll like it hebrews 12 6 to 7 If God loves you specially, He will raise you harshly. If God loves you so, He will treat you harshly. <laughs> for whom the Lord loves, I wish I could get it in the message. Can't you find for me? Give me another version. Any version you have apart from King James. Let me see what it says. Ay, 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 ay. What? what everyone who he takes as what his son experiences his rod if God loves you specially he will treat you it's the process he will take you through painful situations of life that your last option will be suicide you will feel like you should die I've been there I know pain not in teaching it, but in the experience of it. I've seen pain. Which version have you given me? For the Lord sends punishment on his loved ones. He didn't say the people that annoyed him. His loved ones. <laughs> and everyone whom he takes as his son has experience of his rod. <laughs> they have an idea about it. Do we understand that? I wish you can find message for me. There's a way message puts it. You know why? If I don't teach what I'm teaching now, I said this to one of my daughter yesterday night, you will keep repeating classes in God. Because when God brings you into painful situations and experiences, when you're you are supposed to learn, you remain there. What brings you out of those situations faster is that you have wisdom to understand why it was happening. Yes, you will repeat processes in God. Uh, who has the message? It is the child he loves that he disciplines. The child he embraces, he also corrects. You, you see what the Bible says? It says he is educating you with pain. I many of you like that kind of education? God is what? Educating you. Go ahead. That's why you must not leave church. He said you won't drop out. God is what? Educating you. It's a part of the system of pain. It's a spiritual system. We are with God's name. Pain is a spiritual system. We are with God fashions, man. You, you want to go ahead. This trouble, the wala is not punishment. It is, I like that. It is what? Training. I remember when I had certain painful situations of my life. I ran. I ran to some of my fathers, they were laughing. I'll be, I'll be trying to explain to the person, you know, sometimes you make, you, you paint it so that they understand it. And they'll be smiling. As if you are, you are not talking to them. 
it was later I understood the mystery of pain. Do we understand that? Number what are we? So I said number three, if God loves you specially, he will raise you what? Harshly. Many want greatness but don't want to go through training. And why you must go through training is that most of the times, the anointing of a king rests upon a kid. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, who unto you? King is a child. So you must go through painful experiences of life. Do we understand that? Number four, there are some afflictions. Prayer and fasting will never take away. Only timing will. I've been there. I teach prayer. We, we pray here. We fast. God will take you through seasons of unanswered prayers. Seasons where nothing is working for you. Seasons where the things you pray about begins to multiply in your life. Sometimes you now feel it's not better I don't pray. How many of you have been there? That it's like the more I pray, it's becoming worse. So it's better I respect myself and keep quiet. I've been there. I'm alive to tell the story of how I overcome His goodness and mercy. Number five, the inability of people to gain mastery over pain and disappointment has led many to take the option of suicide because nobody taught them this. People would prefer to die it has led many to get into yahoo yahoo sometimes blame people for what you see them do is because you have not been into their levels of pain we are the only option you are in a situation where you have to provide or the other option is death and they are tempted to because they've not mastered what pain and disappointment have you gone go online you see many bitter souls they are cursing god have you not seen cursing god go online why? Because they found them in a situation and nobody taught them that this is part of Christianity. They only taught them everything is just good. So when they saw the other side of it, they couldn't start it. Do you understand? Psalm 125 and verse 3. Listen, listen. So you don't just insult people for what you see them doing. When you see them getting involved in certain social decadence or certain social vices, you pray for them. The Bible says that the road of the wicked, right? Psalm 125, 3 more rest upon the righteous less the lot of the righteous put their hands into what iniquity there is a even scriptures confirm that there is a kind of pain that can push people into wrongdoing do you have that scriptures he said for the road the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put forth their hands not the unrighteous the righteous will put their hands to start doing wrong you've not been in situation where the person has been in days not to eat nothing to eat and the only option is let me do this here let me just give my body and get out of this pain do we understand that so sometimes you don't as much as I don't support what they do getting into prostitution and all these wrong things but sometimes pain pushes men into it pain the panting for survival the panting to your world, the panting to show that you are existing, push men into wrongdoing. It's a possibility. Do we understand that? Are we getting very quickly? What is the glory in tribulation? What is the joy in pain? Why do God ever bring pain? Number one, God uses affliction to reveal the hearts of men and to reveal your own heart. Luke 2 35. God uses afflictions to reveal the hearts of men and to reveal your own heart. When the battles of life hit me, many people couldn't stand it. They left. They left. Some other statements, they are, even, if, even if they, they are dashing you money every day in the next five years, when will you start? How can it work? I bet more than I leave this thing. The Bible says, a sword shall pierce through his own soul also. That's what will happen, the thoughts of men. Will be revealed. You think you have friends, wait till you enter problem. It is it to tell you the heart of those around you? I had statements that shook my ears. People I trusted, people I gave my all to, people that knew my everything, took the rod and stabbed me to my heart. Because of a season of pain, they concluded 
you can never come out of again. That point in time, they felt they have the upper hand over you. A sword will pierce your heart. So sometimes you, you just gather every caliber of human being around you. See, listen, listen. And I will say it with all sense of humility. I don't treat everybody in my life the same way. Even God does the same. You think he treats everybody the same way? Oh yeah, two of us, let's go, Mike. Then you know that Christian is the general title. A company, did they pay everybody the same salary? So where did you learn your gospel from? I place men in positions in my heart based on their contributions to my life. And that's how you should do. Everybody, everybody is my friend. Everybody is my friend. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 2. So God does that. Listen. <laughs> when things go bad around your life, there are people that will think God has left you and they will walk away. You know why? When they walk away, allow them to go because they were not supposed to be in the next story of your life. Everyone can be of your storyline, but not everyone can be a part of your glory. So God will begin to sift them with wahala and make them short-circuited to see your end. Every man you see lifted and rising, there were times people concluded them. I say this one, this is the highest he can ever go. And they forgot that future is not 10 years to come. It is microseconds away. Right here in a few seconds, God can change the story of a young man, a young lady. It will be serene that will carry them out of church. If that's how it changes life, in a few seconds. I told you of my daughter, the mom was teaching in Benue State. Few seconds, they just made her commissioner, Women Affairs, Benue State. Is she no more than the VC? Few se seconds like this. I've seen men's life change. It's just seconds. It's not future, it's not 50. You think like that, you'll be short circuited to see greatness in smallness. And when you don't do that, you'll be an unwise man because wise men have the ability to see what a king in a child, Jesus. And they have the ability to carve a space in his heart in gift at that moment. Coming later where he's already Jesus have make no meaning to him. Do you understand that? That's how you invest in future friendships. You meet people at their low state and can perceive greatness in them and invest in them. Make contributions to their life. Proverbs 17 verse 17. The Bible says that a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for what? wahala adversity so when you come through painful situations you see those that walk away they were never friends because the structure of the kingdom is that a friend is there all time a brother is majorly known during what times of hard situation times of problem may god cause those that have concluded you congratulate you in the name of jesus number two Okay, I said number one, God uses affliction to reveal the heart of those around you and to reveal your own heart. Deuteronomy 8 verse 2. He said, I tried you in the wilderness with hunger to reveal your heart. I tested you. Right? He said, and thou shalt remember the way of the Lord by the God led thee these 40 years into humble thee and to put what was in your heart. I want to know whether you people are following me genuinely. I want to reveal your heart. So sometimes I will make things not make sense. I will by myself promise you. Listen, there's, there's a way, you know, all of you follow the Yoruba praise God. I was listening to a Yoruba praise and chant and one caught my attention and I asked the person, what's the meaning? He said, the meaning of what the woman said is that the one who can make his prophet a liar. Yeah. <laughs> you have not been there. I've been there. I've told you how I saw a vision. Nigerian Denmark, a few years ago. I saw the cop moving like this to Nigeria. You do I vow or never profess in Nigeria? Man. Other country tried, but Nigeria don't risk your anointing. And I came out plainly that day. I didn't watch the match at home. I went with my friends to confirm prophecy. I clear. Do we understand that? So if I, the the way they play, first half zero. I looked at the team. Second half, I say it will it will be three. Those people will not come more than that two again. Nigeria will just give three to not be three two. Tell you the story. The confidence to which you see we can stand now. I say, come, God is saying to. <laughs> it's not because we have gift. 
is from the pace of a training and experience of life. So shame is gone. We can trust him to say if he will bear the glory, he should collect the shame. If you are scared of the shame, it shows that the glory of whatever Jesus is only the truth. So if I say we pray for you, now why should I be scared that if it doesn't happen, shame will catch me? So if it happens, glory will catch me. Number two, God must take you through the process of pain to work his character in you. Romans 5 and verse 3 to 5 and Proverbs 25 verse 4. Romans 5, 3 to 5. He said, I'm not only so tribulation. I'm happy when we see it. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience worketh what? Experience. And experience hope. Confidence that you cannot be ashamed. You, you just know you know it. To work his character in the inside of you. Listen. How many of you have seen the copper smith? Do you know it is, you know when the copper smith puts his metal on the heat he can't forge at that point point the conditions for him to forge is that he must get to a point the metal has turned red it has carried the full property of what the heat is that not so then at that point he can begin to bend and mold it is in the redness of the heats of life that god forms his nature and character in the inside of us number three they are god's tool pain is God's tool for lifting and promotion. Pain is God's tool for lifting and promotion. Genesis 45 and verse 5. Joseph told his brother, he said, do not worry. I hold nothing against you. For God used you to send me ahead of time to preserve life. If you didn't do that, I won't find myself in Egypt. Do we understand that? They are God's tool for lifting and promotion. Job 23 and verse 10 and Job and verse 1. He said there is a place for good and for silver where they find it. Number four, to make the glory sweet. What is the glory in tribulation? That's what we are talking about. To make the glory sweet. You know if you have not seen darkness, you will not appreciate it. Is that not so? If you have not seen poverty, you won't appreciate prosperity. To make the glory sweet. That's why testimony in a Yoruba form is called testimony. What I went through. And came out of becomes my testimony. Do we understand that? The flavor and the savour of the glory, the story behind it. Number five. To purify your motive and passion. Job 41, verse 25. Give me that scripture. To purify your motive and passion. When he raised up himself, the minds he are afraid by reason of breaking, they purify themselves. A young man, God is just using him to ministry. The first time he saw three people go heed of Edic, he organized crusade. Say, bring the blind to deaf, the lame, cancer, come. And you know the most annoying thing is to offend a dumb, a deaf person. You don't call her. Are you? Ba 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 ba. She will soon slap you. God will scatter it to make sure that your motive is what right. So even if he chooses to take ministry take everything will you still see him as God to purify your motive and passion Number six, to solidify your faith any faith that is not tried and tested cannot be trusted to solidify your faith your confidence in him so you should know that it's from the basis of these painful experiences of life that we build the confidence to talk in the open do you understand that the bible says in a proverb no, no, thank you, Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. Let me find it. Thank you. Um, Hebrews 11, 27. The Bible says, and that Moses was able to stand before Pharaoh, having seen the invisible. He had been in situations that have revealed God. He could look at Pharaoh and say, let my people get for his life. Number seven. Why pain? The process of the acclimatization of what? Watchmen. What do I mean by that? Listen, if God is raising you as his end time vessel, he will pass you through the same things you are called to solve. If he wants to give you an anointing for opening barren wombs, you will first be barren. I'm telling you Christianity. The way they raised us. What is your spaghetti Christianity you are doing now? If he is calling you into a great healing ministry, you will see sickness. You will battle with typhoid. 
you see it the acclimatization of watchmen if he's calling to a ministry of wealth you will see poverty ah. I read a story of was it um, of Koza he said he suffered so much to a point God told him what you lack the most is what you have the most it is in the season of him bringing you out of that pain that he makes such a statement he puts a sworn blessing on a life the acclimatization of watchmen it will make you feel the pain you are called to solve so you understand it when you see people going through it are we getting blessed if he wants you to get to a point where you begin to bless people with houses <laughs> you will sleep average if he wants you to get to a point where you bless people with cars ah, you enter a track this leg you will use it till it carries muzu so when you are giving out cars you are giving from the point of you understand what people are going through not from the point of i have it too much it's called the acclimatization of watchmen putting them into what i want them to solve that's why for jake and for moses he knew that i will have to send this guy to bring my people out of egypt he pushed him first to egypt to go and stay under pharaoh's daughter and learn how egypt operates do you understand that do you understand that he pushed him so god god you know it's we that reads bible and don't understand what god was doing how many of you have seen the crown on the heads of pharaoh you see a snake like this what was the first miracle god taught him to solve the authority over the serpentine spirits of egypt he knew it he knew you thought it was just snakes no annoying snake no he was dealing with principalities and powers even when look at what the bible says it says stretch your hands into the red sea and kill kill the fish the bible says and the not the fishes the fish of the red sea died why would you be concerned about just one it was talking about the marine spirit there that was what pharaoh's daughter went to do there it's not just she went to bait alone she went to pay obeisance to the marine powers that's why look at what she said when that uh, most brought towards her direction that she heard the cry what did she call him moses why that the water spirit gave me it's not the meaning of moses sorry for those of you that be it it means out of water it's not the water of life <laughs> don't change your name it's good after all you will lead the people of egypt out that's why she interpreted it because she didn't have a child so she felt that the water spirits had given me children he made him understand Every language, the lifestyle, the culture of Egypt, because he will one day send him there to deal with the same. It's called the acclimatization of watchmen. I'm teaching you from the basis of his word. And if what God wants you to solve, you will first go through it. Do you understand that? You will go through it, and it is your coming out of it that brings an ordination on you. Number eight, to bring out the deposits of God in the inside of you. Job 29 verse six. Psalm 78 verse 16 Psalm 81 verse 16 See out of the rock comes honey Out of the rock comes streams of water Determine 32 and verse 13 too You can't want gold, pure gold Without going through fire You can't want oil Without they squeezing it You can't want mango juice with just Rolling the mango, you will squeeze it Those squeezing moments are pain To bring out what is in the inside Of you, some of you will not know How strong you are you are kept in solutions where only be strong is the option you have <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying you will not know number nine to advance you by making you uncomfortable the vantage point of pain to advance you by making you on what uncomfortable Genesis 26 None of you ever saw me frowning when we had some issues two years ago. You saw me once frown, or maybe some of you, some, some one of you, this one, you saw me flare up and shouted. Now, there are systems, systems on how to manage those seasons. If you ask all my children around me, very close to me, in those periods of pain, there was only one statement in my mouth Lord, my person, I'm not concerned about what is happening. What I'm just for is not to repeat this class. So I'm just praying, God helps me. Let me just be so sensitive and learn the lessons and do what I'm supposed to do. So I don't repeat this thing again. Because I knew it was a class. I expected it. I expected it. <laughs> Listen. You see, with this, I will teach you why bad happen to good. Come. If this young man runs a restaurant business, I'm teaching you, if other people's grace don't work like that, I'm telling you how my own works. If this young man runs a restaurant business and he comes to me to impart grace on him to explode in his business and I pray for him and I say, Lord, I put you oil on his life take him far and he is there is high tendency that when he goes back to that restaurant business it will close down when I even see it close down I know my grace is at work I'll tell you why you see that level 
I moved him to in the spirit requires a different level of excellence. He can't keep using the same dirty plate and wonder business. Too. So my oil will now start fighting it. And he does not survive in this level of excellence. He's now wondering why more customers are not coming. Because the level I pushed him to, only kings are at that level. And he needs to graduate himself physically by the way he does things to match up that anointing and make you understand why bad things happen to good people. So, Father, I need the grace of God on your life for academic excellence. And I said, no problem. Lord, take what is on me and put on him. And you went to sleep. I wait here. Two. I don't know how to lie to people. If I was looking for a crowd, I would have had overflow. I know what to do. I can sugarcoat the gospel. If I tell you the way it is, if you feel there is a better anointing that will just like you pass, try it. Do we understand it now? Do we capture it? So that's why most of the times God makes you uncle. That's what He was doing to me. He had told me yes, so many things. But you know, this is always a temptation of we humans. The fear of the f- it's not also let me just let me just he will drag a time will come, you will just scatter anything and say, Let me see the option you have now. By yourself you will start taking the steps you are supposed to take. It's a system in God where he uses pain. Do you know the church? Early church, we read in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came and they were in one accord. You thought that that was the intention of God. He left them. They were going, the Bible said they were breaking bread, house to house. They would do a home self, home fellowship. He left them. Ah, these people like this. Church won't blow. Then in Acts chapter, what did he send? Persecution. The Bible said, and the church now what? Scattered to different parts of the world is a system in God. So that's why when you come to the office, sometimes you are talking to us and I will just see me smiling because I understand what is happening. And the only thing you start hearing us say is what? Swear. You know what I say to the righteous people? Say to the righteous. It is swear. We are obeying scripture. Rise up to your feet. Are you blessed this morning? So be careful for the oil you are asking for. Sometimes you are coming to services and we are professing your life. It is scattering things around your world to rearrange them. Do you understand that? Telling you, you can't do this again. You can't do this again. You can't do this again. You can't do the system of pain. So it's not the time for you to ask, Lord, where are you? He's always there. He's walking us. Have you gotten understanding when you see those seasons of your life now? You know, any one of these 10 things I listed is taking place around you. Any one of it anyone whether he uses the devil to accomplish that pain any one of what i said now is happening around your life so it's not a sister a season to to complain a season to murmur is a season to sit and say lord what are you doing in my life i know many of you might have been in that situations and seasons of life but i've taught you he says sir you laid hands on me for academic excellence i became worse than i was when i met you it's the proof of the anointing it works like that in that genesis do you know that even isaac did not know who he was he kept redigging wells and they were closing it when the bible says he now went somewhere and dug a new well they didn't close it again the people of gera came to isaac to say he said you are mightier than us people tell you an individual that is mighty than the nation so you see what was happening was that the grace was fighting that mediocrity was operating by he change himself challenge his level improve his level of excellence listen that's how it works he gives to men gifts according to their several abilities not according to their zeal what they build capacity for so the anointing can to fight you fight you make you uncomfortable to the right thing that's why sometimes if god maybe he wants you to boost your prayer life he has told you you wake you up in sleep you will want to your fill sunday song and sleep back that your fellows will pray for you and alongside sing song I, we know I said you wake up not that you won't wake up you pick it in your says my son my daughter pray it's okay then it's all. take over then you sleep he does it for you then he will bring one wicked wahala around your life you are doing organizing prayer meeting now if after service like this now you say please can I even if you lock the can I still have he said I know you people he knows the creature he made now he knows how to get their attention. Say, Lord, help me. In every face of my life, unpleasant face of my life, 
may I not lose your voice and what you are saying there is a message in every pain you can learn from it may I not lose your voice may I not lose the message in every painful situation I find myself in part time may I not lose the message in it I will not just be going out oh, things are not happening good around my life let me be finding out what is the reason what is, what is the message inside this situation in Jesus name we pray you enter the first relationship the boy beats you you enter second he beats you nobody move you don't because that, it shows you are not paying attention to those unpleasantness it might be God telling you change your taste you know, some of you you want you want six packs with a touch of Pastor Chris and a slight touch of David o. You, that's your choice you, you, you know what I'm talking about some of you are like that that's your choice a pain comes to give you a message not to be born by the same flame twice the problem with believers we don't pay attention you don't ask yourself why the same person do, the same situation mom. let me check it is it a particular taste that is drawing a particular caliber of people to me and then you alter the taste lift up your hands Lord may I not lose your voice Ebenezer Ebenezer Lord help me the help of God help me oh God Help me, help me, help me, help me. Listen, listen. Have you not read the scripture? He said, though he slay me. Joe, is it Job 13, 15? Yet will I praise him. Simply means that one of the instructions we have in the midst of pain is that we are not authorized. Hear the word I'm using. We are not authorized to what? Complain. The best we can do is to ask questions. But we are not authorized to what? Complain. Then you find that you are just repeating processes. He wanted to check your heart. You they follow me because of this thing. Or you genuinely follow. Even if I hit you hard, you will still say I am God. And every time he hits you out, you deny him. You will keep repeating it. You can see, you can walk out of painful situations faster. Faster. In few months to come, in few years to come, some of you will not be in this same level again. In fact, some of you will not be in this country again. Amen. So I pray you will not miss your process in life. You will not repeat the classes of life. I don't know who might be at the verge of giving up. But God is making me to tell you that everything about your life he understands. Pray that none of you will truncate God's process for your life. What I'm teaching is important because I've seen many fall by the wayside of life when pain came and they couldn't stand. I've seen many. But God will help you. God will keep you. God will sustain you in the name of Jesus. And I pray that in every unpleasant situation you are in now, that you have dwelt too long in, you are supposed to come out of it. Any form of pain, health-wise, financial-wise, career-wise, destiny-wise, every pain you are in that is unpleasant, I, by the grace and mantle of God on my life, I pull you out of it. Into your season of establishment, in the name of Jesus, I pray, may God shine on you. May your ways, may your glorious destiny emerge, break forth on every side. May you receive help from above. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy under God. Can I make a proclamation? Are you ready to receive it? I declare, and I declare, as a sign of divine presence in this service, and as a sign that He called me. Not that it will stop after 21 days. It will be a lifestyle for you. But counting from today, mark the next 21 days. There will be no day you will not enjoy help. There will be no day I stand under God to prophesy. There will be no day you will not have a record of help. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has limited you, every force of hell that has held your destiny bound, you have prayed. It looks like you want to break through, but there's a resistance, there's a hindrance, there is something just holding you back. I declare and I declare by the mantle of God upon my life, you are set loose now. You are set loose now. Anyone on whose head a generational cause is hanging, a negative pro. Enchantment holding your destiny bound. I release fire now. Let covens catch fire. Let witchcraft shine catch fire. Let witchcraft water catch fire. 
and let your destiny be set free in the name of Jesus. Stretch forth your hands. I declare and I declare whatever you lay their hands upon from today, whether on people, whether on things, whether on places, it will prosper. I say it will prosper. I put the anointing of the Lord upon your hands. Whatever you lay the hands upon, whether on places you stretch your hands towards places, you place your hands on people, you place your hands on things, your ATM and say money enter. I decree and I declare under God, it will prosper. It will prosper in the name of Jesus. And I release upon your life the oil of favor and the oil of acceptance. In the name of Jesus.